maybe, just maybe, a follow-up expedition will bring more data that will allow us to solve the mystery of the vanishing Dutchman. Two years later. So, of all the places on Earth, we choose to come back here, to Freetown in Sierra Leone. Here people understand very well the meaning of the word suffering. From the early 90s up till 2002, Sierra Leone faced a debilitating civil war. Extreme poverty, lack of medical care, and a life expectancy of only 43 years. Just a month after this expedition, the first cases of Ebola began to break through. The people are some of the most friendly and dignified people on Earth. And since this time we are more of an international expedition, it turns out that we have more in common than you might think. And he has his own name. He has his own. Everybody has his own name. Are you from UK? UK, England, yeah. Oh, yeah. From Manchester. White, white and black, the same. Yeah, yeah, we're Yours. brothers, yeah. We're the yeah. same. Yeah, we're brothers, man. Brothers from we're other brothers, mothers, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Brothers yeah. from other mothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we are. It is February 2014 and the second expedition to the Vanishing Dutchman. We spent our first few days in Freetown. Our time in the capital was set aside primarily to buy equipment needed for the expedition, such as engines to drive compressors for the airlift. We also met local authorities to ensure paperwork and permits to dive were all in place. During our time in Freetown, we also took time to see some of the more interesting places around the city. Okay, where we are is right in the centre of Freetown, Sierra Leone here. And we're at that famous tree where many hundreds of years ago they used to part and sell slaves. If we look up, we can see bats on the trees. Very, very significant landmark in Freetown. So now we leave Freetown, the main capital, and head down the peninsula towards the old fishing village of Kent. In favourable conditions, the drive takes around eight hours. Our expedition base would be Banana Islands, located approximately 40 miles away from the capital. The goal is simple. Continue an archaeological-based project in order to identify the remains of a shipwreck. A shipwreck estimated to be lost at some time during the 1700s. Now we just need to move all the gear onto the small wooden boats that will take us across the Banana Islands. It looks like this was the beach where they uh, took the slaves onto the ships. But they kept them inside this, uh, inside a wall and a building that was built here. And uh, this was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And this was uh, built by the Portuguese. It was a Portuguese holding place for the slaves. But we can see how old it is as we pan across here. The, uh, the trees have actually grown completely up against the wall, the stone wall. You can see. It's From here, it's only 40 minutes to the island, the place where we left the shipwreck only two years ago. Finally, we are on the island. The island is nothing but African jungle. There are no roads, no vehicles, no fuel, no cell phone coverage, no internet. Water is carried manually from village wells, and if you wanted food, you quite literally had to catch it. On many occasions, we had scorpions and huge spiders walking the walls of our living quarters. One very unwelcome guess was a seven-foot black cobra which came through the water pipe into our shower room. It took a number of hours with help from local villagers to hunt the dangerous snake. We now begin setting up for the diving. As previously, we had to bring with us a huge amount of equipment. In addition to the irregular diving equipment, we had to bring to the jungle a dive compressor, diving cylinders, an airlift and professional underwater metal detectors.
It took a number of days to prepare the equipment for the dives that lay ahead. Do you actually know what you're doing, you two? Not a clue. Not a fucking clue. One of the expedition tasks was to photograph the entire shipwreck site. Preparations to work on a photo mosaic had already begun at the expedition base. The underwater photo project consisted of taking hundreds and hundreds of photographs over the course of the first week. We're now going to begin diving the wreck. Part of the team worked to expose the sandy bottom using an airlift. Other members of the team searched the wreck site with a metal detectors. We were able to find many, many artifacts. In addition to the numerous fragments of porcelain, we also found many pieces of lead and copper, as well as clear and distinctive sections of the shipwreck itself. A few days before the end of the expedition, we found our piece of treasure. A gold ring, perhaps a signet ring, but more importantly for us, another artifact that may help us towards the identification of the wreck itself. The gold ring perhaps does not have great financial value, but it has huge historical value. We know that it was made in Western Europe between 1720 and 1740. All artefacts recovered from the wreck site were transferred to the National Museum of Sierra Leone in Freetown for preservation and final display. Here we are in the Museum of Sierra Leone in the heart of Freetown, the capital of uh, Sierra Leone. And in the museum here there's already some objects that have been uh, donated by a previous expedition to the shipwreck. The expedition determined that the wreck possibly sank in around about 1602 and the porcelain that we're finding is possibly that of Ming Dynasty. But the, por the, uh, the artefacts are on display here. On one of the canyon trunnions we find the letter F. This indicates that the cannon has been cast by the Swedish foundry Finspong. At that time, Finspong was the largest supplier of cannon for the Dutch market, including the East Indian run of the VOC fleet. All analysis shows that we're dealing with the wreck of possibly a Dutch ship that sank sometime in the mid-18th century. Contact with a Dutch historian by the name of Arthur Scheide brought a breakthrough in research and identification of the wreck. Searching deep into the Dutch archives at The Hague, led us to find an article in a newspaper from June the 13th, 1748. It read of a VOC fleet ship commanded by Captain Christoffel Bort. She was on a seven-month voyage home having left Ceylon, today known as Sri Lanka, in January of 1747. In August of 1747, she arrived on the western tip of Banana Island. 
On board remained no more than 10 crew members, including the captain and the navigator. The newspaper report suggested, quote, hundreds of Negroes arrived from the jungle, plundered and burnt the great ship. Although research continues, it appears that the men went ashore, lost their lives in a battle with the indigenous people. Two men that had remained on board the ship were rescued by a passing slave ship by the name of the Blessed Sugarcane. After two expeditions, more than two years of hard work, we can proudly now say that it's all paid off. The mystery has been solved. The Vanishing Dutchman was a vessel of some 145 Amsterdam feet and weighed approximately 850 tons. She was built in 1736 for the Dutch East India Company. Her name, the Demamere.